Well, that was pointless. Moving on. In the box, the Americans find the Book of the Dead, as well as the five organ jars for Anax and Amun. They show them off to Evelyn's group, and she tells them about the home die, and how the Egyptians feared doing it because if a victim of it ever arose, they would bring about the ten plagues of Egypt. Guys, I really don't know how many more times I can stress this, but why would you do that? Evelyn sees that the key to open the sarcophagus can also open the Book of the Dead, and she steals it from Doc when he is asleep. O'Connell warns her not to open it, though. It's just a book. No harm ever came from reading a book. <clears throat> I present to you, times when opening a book was bad. Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, Hocus Pocus, Teen Titans, Death Note, Doctor Who, The Care Bears Movie, Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost, Evil Dead, Eternal Darkness, and Inkheart. Wait a minute, Brendan Fraser! Evelyn reads from the book, and unfortunately for the Americans, Imhotep comes back to life. The group then gets attacked by locusts, oh, right, plagues, and run into the tomb for cover. Glasses has a Velma moment. My glasses! My glasses! I can't see without my glasses! And he gets attacked by Imhotep. As Evelyn's group tries to run away from a swarm of scarabs, she falls through a passage and she finds glasses, except his tongue and eyes have been taken by Imhotep. Why he didn't just kill him right then and there? I don't know. Laziness, I guess? Imhotep comes in, but since he stole the worst eyes of the group, his sight isn't that great, and he mistakes Evelyn for an ox and a moon. The Americans meet up with O'Connell and Jonathan, who find Evelyn and her new friend. Yeah, O'Connell, that'll show him! Oh, that actually worked! Oh, it's a good thing Imhotep's only in mini-boss mode, since he falls over immediately! They run into the tomb and find the Magi, who are understandably pleased that our heroes have unleashed the ancient evil they've been guarding their whole lives. I told you, I got him. Now this. This creature is the bringer of death. He will never eat. He will never sleep. He will never stop. Okay, seriously? Cameraman Steve must have a fucking crush on Ardeth, because every time he is talking, the camera is slowly zooming in on his face. Know this. This creature is a bringer of death. He will never eat. He will never sleep. Hey. Steve, put your pants back on. Hmm. Benny ends up running into Imhotep and does his best Adam Sandler impression to soothe the savage beast. Jeez, you're just gift wrapping these jokes for me, aren't you? The group escape to Cairo, where O'Connell tries to convince Evelyn to leave, but she refuses. Benny takes Imhotep to Glasses, who at least at this point kind of needs a better nickname. Prince Imhotep thanks you for your hospitality. Yeah. And for your eyes. And for your tongue. Oh. But I'm afraid more is needed. Oh. Then why didn't he do it before? Every time Imhotep eats someone, one of the plagues happens. So when all the water and alcohol apparently turn into blood, O'Connell knows that he is there and goes to get Evelyn. They find the corpse of glasses and see Imhotep has a bit more meat on his bones than before. Oh, gross. Before he can attack the others, he runs into his greatest fear. Keyboard Cat! <laughs> They go to the Museum of Antiquities, and oh hey look, the curator is in league with the Magi. Shocking. They basically are there to let the group know what we already know. Imhotep's backstory, why he wants to kill the Americans, and even why he's afraid of kitties. Apparently he plans to use Evelyn as the human sacrifice needed to resurrect Anax and Amun. We'll need all the help we can get. His powers are growing. God damn it, Steve! They need to find Doc before Imhotep does, and O'Connell locks Evie in her room so she doesn't get kidnapped by Imhotep, leaving Trigger happy and Cowboy to watch over her. Jonathan and O'Connell find Benny rummaging through Doc's office, and they find out that he's working for Imhotep, who needs the Book of the Dead to bring back a Nox and a Moon. They are too late to save Doc, however, and Benny escapes. 
Aww, that's not quite the dramatic comeuppance I was looking for. Trigger Happy goes to get a drink, leaving Cowboy alone, and of course, Imhotep kills him. Well, that is what you get for watching The Ring. Too polite to just kick down the door, Imhotep decides to go the creepy route and goes through the keyhole by turning into sand. Thankfully, O'Connell uses the cat to scare Imhotep away. You alright? Well, not sure. They go to the museum to try and find the location of the Book of Amun-Ra, which might be their only means of killing Imhotep. Unfortunately, he's got more friends now. Last but not least, my favorite plague. Boils and sores. They have become his slaves. Wait, mind control boils? That sounds familiar. I will call you Pastulio! Eh, must be nothing. Evelyn deduces that the Book of the Dead and the Book of Amun-Ra were switched, and she figures out the book's location. Jonathan runs into a bit of trouble trying to get the getaway car started. Fucking genius! He is my favorite character, if nothing else because of the way he inadvertently ends up saving the day. They get away in the car but run into a bit of trouble. Abandon him! He's a plot necessary death! Imhotep eventually catches up to them, however, and tells Evelyn to come with him. It is time to make you mine forever. For all eternity, idiot. A lot of the charm of this movie comes from its bits like this, where the writing is very clever and funny. Imhotep tells Evie he will spare the rest of them if she goes with him, which she agrees to, but of course he's lying and he sets his followers on them. Typical villain. Thankfully, there is a convenient sewer just in front of them, and the curator sacrifices himself to save them. undermine that heroic sacrifice with some peppy transition music. Taking lessons from Bambi, are we? They find Winston, a pilot and friend of O'Connell's, who yearns for a dangerous adventure after his experiences in the Great War. Is it dangerous? Well, you probably won't live through it. Hi, Joe. Do you really think so? Well, everybody else we bumped into has died. Why not you? Oh, good. You did notice that. I was kind of beginning to worry. Evie and Benny are transported to Hamanoptra via Sandstorm when O'Connell and the others arrive in Winston's plane. Imhotep tries to knock the plane out of the air. Raptor face! And Evie decides to distract him a la Princess Jasmine technique. Yeah. They manage to get out of the storm but crash anyway, though they all survive except for Winston, and his plane falls into quicksand. But I didn't know quicksand was in the desert, but whatever. They go into Hominoptera, and Jonathan is tempted to touch the scarab beetles the warden found earlier. But this time, they do attack him, though O'Connell manages to cut it out of him in time. Imhotep wakes up his mummified priest to set them on O'Connell's group, who come across the hidden treasure Jonathan was talking about in the beginning of the movie. Taboo. Don't touch anything. The mummies wake up and attack the group, and they find the statue of Horus where the book is located. Imhotep begins the ritual, and Jonathan and O'Connell find the book. Wait, how come that one doesn't have pressurized salt acid in it? Oh, wait, we're all out of extras, that's why. Ardith sacrifices himself to give Jonathan and O'Connell more time to save Evie. Save the girl. Kill the creature. Save the cheerleader. Save the world. Imhotep resurrects Anoxana Moon into her mummified body, but Jonathan runs in with the Book of Amun-Ra. Imhotep decides not to finish the ritual. For some reason. And he goes after Jonathan. O'Connell comes in and attacks the mummies, where hilarity ensues.
inscription on the book's cover, summoning more powerful mummies. Unfortunately, he needs to finish the rest of it to command them, and he didn't quite pass Hieroglyphics 102. O'Connell's scream tactic is just as ineffective as before. <laughs> and Evelyn gets chased by Anox and Amun's mummy. Evie, while being pursued, attempts to help Jonathan figure out the last symbol. This will be a running gag in the series. I'm not really sure if it's all that funny, but whatever. Eventually he gets it, though. Jonathan orders the mummies to kill Anox and Amun, and Imhotep's waffling ends up with her getting killed. Again. She really should be used to this by now. Imhotep tries to kill Jonathan, O'Connell distracts him, and Jonathan manages to pickpocket the key from Imhotep. Keep him busy! No problem. Man, he sure is taking his time killing O'Connell. Not gonna summon your evil magic sandstorm, Imhotep? Evie manages to read an inscription to take away Imhotep's immortality, and O'Connell kills him the old-fashioned way. Sword. As Imhotep's body crumbles, he whispers one last threat. Death is only the beginning. In other words, sequel! Betty's incompetence leads to the collapse of the tomb, and the others have to run to escape before it is completely sealed. O'Connell tries to help Benny get out. Why? I have no idea. But unfortunately, he doesn't make it out. And he's eaten by scarabs. Ah, karma. The gang makes it out just in time, and there's a nice surprise waiting for them outside. Ah! Oh, thank you, thank you very much. He's so cool, he can sacrifice himself and still be alive by the end of the movie. Well, I guess we go home empty-handed. Again. You did manage to live, though, Jonathan. 90% of the cast can't say that. O'Connell and Evie kiss, Jonathan rolls his eyes, and they head out into the sunset, unknowingly richer and carrying the important item for the next movie. Yay! So yeah, this is a really fun movie. It has its clever moments with some really good writing, great character interaction, excellent scene design. The CG holds up for the most part. Imhotep's CG mummy body manages to still look pretty creepy. There are weird editing choices here and there, and a lot of the cast is there to just die like in any other horror movie, so they can be kind of forgettable. <sighs> Great, that means I'm all set, yay! I better go put the disc back. Price for life is threefold. If you don't wish to suffer a fate worse than death, all three must be watched. Aw, oh, man! Uh, you have one year to complete this. Oh, okay, that's pretty good, I guess. Give me some time. You're welcome. Hmm, huh. wait, what's this last part? This message will self-destruct in some time- Oh dear! Are we good? Oh. Okay, well, I'm Kaluna, and thanks for tuning into Screenshots. I'll see you next time, guys! He did the match! He did the monster match! The monster match! It was a graveyard smash. He did the match. It caught on in a flash. He did the match. He did the monster match. Wow. From my laboratory in the castle.